assalamu alaikum a very good morning to all i am sajagan i am working as an assistant professor of commerce at jamal mohammed college my title of the presentation is personal management now i am going to talk about the presentation what is personal management personal management is the strategic approach to the effective and efficient management of people in a company or organization such that they help their business gain a competitive advantages it designed to maximize employee performance in services of an employee strategic objectives personal management is defined as an administrative specialization that focus on hiring and developing employee to become more valuable to the company definition according to flipo personal management is the planning organizing compensation integration and the maintenance of people for the purpose of contributing to organizational individual societal goals functions of personal management these are the two functions of personal management first one is called managerial functions second one is called operative functions managerial functions of personal manager involve post corp planning organizing staffing directing coordinating reporting and budgeting of those who actually perform the operative functions of the personal management managerial function personal planning organizing directing and controlling these are the four types of managerial functions first one personal planning personal planning lists or predetermined a course to do sometime something such as what to do how to do where to do who is to do etc a personal manager plan in advance the trend in wages labor market union demand through planning most of the future problem can be anticipated anticipated organizing second one organizing organization is a structure a framework and a process by which a cooperative group of human being allocate its task among its members identify relationship and integrate its activities towards common objectives the personal manager has to design the structures of relationship among job personal and physical factor so that the objectives of the enterprise are achieved third one directing this function late to guidance and stimulation of the subordinate to all levels the personal manager direct and motivate the employees of the of his department so that they work willingly and effectively for the achievement of organizational goals and last one controlling controlling process a manager man, a personal manager has to constantly watch whether there is any deviation from from the planned path controlling is concerned with remedial action continuous monitoring of the personal policies relating to training labor turnover wage payment interviewing new and separated employee is the backbone of the controlling controlling involves the following stages establishment establishment standards measuring actual performance combating actual performance measuring deviation taking corrective action and second one operative functions procurement development compensation integration and maintenance procurement first one procurement job analysis personal planning recruitment selection process placement transfer promotion second one development performance appraisal training executive development career planning and development organizational development etc third common session job evaluation wage and salary administration incentives bonus fringe benefit social security scheme fourth one integration motivating employee to work better boosting the moral of the staff ensuring effective communication enhancing leadership quality providing scope for collective bargaining redressing grievances managing conflict handling disciplinary cases 
providing counseling to get rid of stress improving quality of work life of employees maintaining maintenance fifth one maintenance promoting job satisfaction among employee taking the problem of labor turnover human resource accounting audit and research nature and scope of personal management it is relevant to every good pace it is goal oriented it adopts a systematic approach in handling the manpower resources it is pervasive in nature it is ongoing activities it is dynamic field of activity it focuses on development of manpower resources it is a science as well as an art it is interdisciplinary first one it is relevant to every good pace effective management of human resource is a task to be performed in all the good pace second one it is goal oriented the goal of human resource management is to be making the best use of resources of the organization only then it is possible to achieve the ultimate goal of the organization that is targeted level of profit in the case of a business organization third one it adopt a systematic approach in handling the manpower resources personal management lays emphasis on a systematic approach to be task of managing the human resource of an organization fourth one it is pervasive in nature management of human resource is a task performed at different level of a concern that is right from the manager the operating level the needed for effective management of the manage, manpower resources is felt in all its functional area that is production marketing finance research etc the fifth one it is an ongoing activity as long as manpower resources are needed in any place the importance of its management will be felt the sixth one it is dynamic field of activity the management of human resource is perhaps the most challenging task of every manager people have feeling and therefore they cannot be handled in the way inanimate things like machine or handled it focus on development of manpower resources this is done through training program needless to say in organization it is only the human resource can be trained to acquire greater skill and the eighth one it is science as well as an art as as a social science it relies on experiment and observation for the sake of making references as an art it is called for certain special skills on the part of the effective handling of the manpower resources ninth one it is interdisciplinary personal management does makes use of the concept of subject such as sociology psychology economics etc as a subject it is therefore interdisciplinary in nature interdisciplinary in nature the importance of personal management it helps to identify correctly the action it is manpower needs it ensures that the organization does not does not suffer from either surplus or shortage of manpower regularity authority manpower planning what is manpower planning the process of determining the manpower needs of an organ enterprise so that it possible to fill up any vacancy as when it arises such a plan eliminate the risk of surplus or shortage of short staff at any time definition manpower planning is the process of determining and assuming that the organization will have a an adequate number of qualified persons available at the proper time pro performing job which meet the needs of the enterprise and which provide satisfaction for the individual involved importance of manpower planning it helps organization to procure required manpower it further helps to replace employee it helps in expansion program it ensure optimum investment in human resources it is indispensable to give a effect to reservation policy 
it is essential in view of the problem of labor turnover it helps to take tackle the problem of surplus or shortage of manpower it become necessary to meet the needs of changing technology importance of manpower planning characteristics of man plan another one characteristics of man per planning it is goal oriented second one it focus attention on the present and the future manpower needs of an organization it follow a systematic approach to the task fulfilling the manpower needs it promotes efficiency it is a continuous process it can be made flexible it is goal oriented it focus attention on the present and future manpower needs of an organization it follow a systematic approach to the task fulfilling the manpower needs it promotes efficiency it is a continuous process it can be made flexible okay next various steps involved in manpower planning first analyzing the organizational plan forecasting demand forecasting supply making and estimate the net hr requirement and the last one preparation the action plan first one analyzing the organizational plan purchase of raw material installation of machines and their maintenance production finance and accounting marketing research and development maintenance of employee record and so on forecasting the demand for human resources keeping the mind the expansion and the diversification program of the enterprise in the near future the rate of turnover and the absenteeism the technological changes the trend in the job market and so on the future manpower requirement of the enterprise needed to be forecasted the quantity as well as the quality in the term of skill experience knowledge etc of the human resource shall be taken into account while making the forecast forecasting the demand human resource manager judgment time study method ratio analysis three category first category managerial judgment the heads of the department will be a position to estimate the manpower needs of their respective department in the near future while making such estimation they into account the various factors such as the general trends in the industry the expansion and diversification programmers of the enterprise and so on and the second one time study method the time study makes use of the concept of standard time for completing a certain task by using such a study it is possible to determine the manpower needs of an organization for example standard time per workers per day 6 hours manpower man hour needed to complete the weekly production target 300 hours standard time 6 hours weekly production target 300 hours the number of workers required to complete the task therefore 300 50 hours in 6 hours the ratio analysis third one ratio analysis ratio may be calculated the past data relating to the number of employees in each category to the level of the activity production level num production level sales level the number of the employees sales level the number of sales representatives so on such ratio as useful knowing in the future manpower needs of the enterprise for example level of sales in the previous years 2500 units number of sales representatives in the previous years tens the ratio of sales level to the number of sales representative 250 is to 1 sales level to be attained in the current year 4000 units 
the number of sales representative required for attaining the target 16 additional 100 needed therefore 6 Ten number of sales representative in the previous year tens. Ten the number of sales representative required at attain for attaining the target sixteen. Additional hundred needed therefore six for current year. Okay, next two one third one forecasting supply. Collecting information about the existing human resource inventory is is what is first step is forecasting the future supply of human resource. First two. department wise job category wise age wise skill wise experience wise pay scale wise sex wise sex wise mean gender category forecasting supply once information on the existing human resource is obtained the next steps is to be estimate the future losses of human resource loss of human resource can be arising on account of the following reasons retirement resignation death dismissal disablement lay off retrenchment making an estimate of the net human resource requirement a comparison between the demand and supply forecast of human resource would indicate the net manpower requirement of the enterprise it may be either surplus or deficit surplus indicate that some employees are redundant will deficiency implies the need for additional hand added and and the fifth one preparing the action plan in case of surplus manpower the employees found in excess of the requirement may be redeployed that is sent to branch office concerned where there is shortage of manpower redeployed is prevent in government organization the process of determining the nature and the content of a particular job is what is known as job analysis such an analysis will bring out the following the task to be performed in a given job second one the conditions under which the job has to be performed third one the skill capability required to perform the job advantages of job analysis it helps the employer to select the job right job right person to the right job it helps in the correct placement of employees job analysis is useful in determine needs of an employees job analysis is the helpful in job evaluation it provide a suitable basis for an objective appraisal of the performance it gives scope for work simplification job analysis also help the management is matters concerning employee promotion and transfer once the contentant of your job is known it is possible for any applicant to judge his own capability for the job job analysis feature help to maximize job satisfaction among the employees a standard of output can be logically determined in turn with the job content job description what is job de- description job description is a written statement of the nature and content of a particular job it is prepared on the basis information obtained through job analysis name title of the job designation department duties and responsibility working conditions and the last one accountability we may be prepare a job description statement for the job for an accountant in textile firm incorporating the above few particulars thank you